What's up guys, Matt Bell here with Electric Violin Shop and we are live again on another Wednesday. Let's see if I set this violin down just right. You may have noticed like that's really weird to see Matt playing a non-electric violin. It is a little weird to see me playing a non-electric violin. It's a little weird for me to be playing a non-electric violin. But that's what we're talking about today. We are talking about amplifying our acoustic violins because uh, you know most violinists also have acoustic violins. Most violinists are acoustic violinists. It's just the like the rare birds of us that uh, that play electric. But even those of us who pretty much exclusively play electric professionally, like me, uh, we also have acoustic violins, and occasionally we'll need to amplify those things. So, <laughs> I promise it's not the Rona. Um, so the thing is with those instruments, even if you are exclusively an acoustic player, occasionally you are going to have to amplify that instrument. Maybe you're playing a wedding and the, uh, the bride wants to have a nice clean audio for, uh, for her video. So they're going to want to maybe put a micro pickup on your instrument. Uh, maybe you're occasionally picking up a quartet gig where uh, it's gonna be sort of a loud dinner crowd and they just they need just a little bit of amplification on you guys to sort of get the things spread out. Uh, maybe they're gonna be recording you. So there's just a number of reasons that you wanna amplify. So you're occasionally gonna to have to capture the sound of your instrument and get it either to a PA or a recording device. And uh, that's why you will need a transducer. So we we'll hear the word transducer. What is a transducer? A transducer is anything that takes one form of energy and converts it to another form of energy. So in our particular case, we're trying to capture vibrations either in the air or from the instrument itself and convert those to electricity where that electrical signal can be either amplified or recorded. So a transducer is either a mic or a pickup. That's two ways to, to transduce the sound energy from your instrument into electrical energy that can be amplified or recorded. So the question that we get so, so often is a mic or a pickup, which one's better? And the answer is always, it depends. And what does it depend on? That's what we're going to talk about in the next little bit. So uh, let me see. One of the first things I want to tell you guys is about our YouTube channel. We're going to be playing some... We're going to be playing some uh, pickups and mics today, but I'm not going to have a lot of time to go through every pickup or mic that we have. Um, and I want to send you guys to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash electric violin shop. We've got tons of videos up here, reviews of all these different pickups. Um, I'm probably going to eventually redo those videos now that I got some better technology. But the videos that we've got, you can hear my acoustic violin and then you can hear the pickup or the mic just run through a Fishman. Those, those two uh, sets of audio are separated out. Um, so you'll be able to hear the instrument and then you'll be able to hear what the mic or the pickup does to the sound of the instrument. All right. So a microphone, the way a microphone works is it takes vibrations out of the air and converts those into electricity. You're hearing my voice that's been picked up by a microphone that I'm looking at right now. So as the sound waves leave my mouth, travel through the air, they hit a diaphragm in that microphone and it vibrates that diaphragm and that converts to electricity and then goes down through the wire into the sound system. A pickup takes those vibrations from a solid uh, piece of wood, the instrument, uh, in this case, the bridge. As the bridge is vibrating, the pickup senses those vibrations and the way a piezo pickup works uh, let's see if I get a slide here. Yeah, okay. So the way a violin, let's just talk about the way a violin works. The way a violin works is when you draw your bow across the string, it makes the string vibrate. That vibration gets transferred to the bridge. The bridge starts shaking back and forth. Those vibrations get transferred into the top plate of the violin, then through the top plate of the violin to the back plate through the sound post. So that's why there's a sound post in there. The sound post transfers those vibrations to the back plate of the instrument. Then the back plate and the top plate both vibrate. Okay, and then these F holes that are here is literally pumping air out through the F holes. So 
So the violin itself is a mechanical amplifier. The wooden box that we have here mechanically amplifies the sounds that come from the, the vibrating of the strings. It's not a linear amplifier though. A linear amplifier is one that amplifies all frequencies exactly the same. You know, so a, a little, one of the things that people will notice when they start playing electric violin is when you change bows, you'll, you'll actually hear a thump when uh, coming out of your amplifier. That's about 50 hertz. That's actually happening in your acoustic violin too. If you will listen for it, if you hear it under your ear, you will hear that thump when you change bow directions on a string but the amplifier, the, the violin body itself, does not amplify 50 hertz very well. That's intentional because that's, that's below the range of what we want the violin to sound like. So below 50 hertz, it doesn't do a very good job of amplifying. Within that like 200, no, 100, 180 hertz, 186 hertz, I think is a G string, up to, you know, I, I don't know, six or seven K, it amplifies quite well, not quite linearly, but um, more or less well in those ranges. And then above about 7K, they really don't amplify very well at all, which is why the scratchiness that you hear, the bow scratch that you hear under your ear, if you'll really listen, if you'll listen, you can hear the bow hairs grabbing on that string under your ear, but a person who's 20 feet away doesn't hear it. It's because the sound's coming off the string, but it's not being amplified by the body of the instrument. So the instrument is an A-linear amplifier. And so if we want to capture all of the, and, and that's on purpose, right? That's the design of the instrument is designed to only uh, amplify certain frequencies and to amplify certain ones more than others. So that's why the violin has a very characteristic sound. If we put a microphone on the instrument, then the microphone hears what's coming out of the F-holes, the air that's coming out of the F-holes, and it incorporates all of those A-linear types of amplification. So the frequencies that we don't want get swallowed on purpose, and the microphone does not hear those frequencies. A pickup, on the other hand, because it is attached to the wood of the violin partway through that whole process between the bow, the strings, the bridge, top plate, sound plate, uh, sound post and the back plate because it's attached in this case to the bridge you can see it does not take advantage of that full set of a linear amplification so the pickup actually hears more vibrations than the designer of the violin wants you to it can hear those super low frequencies the bow thump and it can hear that bow scratch which the the instrument itself does not intentionally does not amplify so we've got to do a little bit of work. So when we say it's not the most natural sound, it doesn't mean that pickups sound bad. Pickups actually hear better than microphones do. It's just that that's not always desirable. Okay, does that make sense? So we are going to go to the next slide. All right, so the mic sounds more natural. It sounds more like what we think a violin should sound like and the makers of the violin think it should sound like. A pickup is more isolating. So let's talk about isolation. When you're on a stage and say we, we've got a, a string quartet and we want to record that string quartet, there's a couple different ways to do that. One, we can put a microphone about two or three meters from that string quartet. And you know, as, as we talked about before, the sound that comes right under your ear is not the sound that the audience hears six, eight, 10, 20 feet away from you some of that sound that coming out of the instrument has to bloom a little bit. And then some of those frequencies that are coming off the strings that are not amplified by the body, those are gonna get swallowed up. That's why it sounds scratchier under your ear than it does 10 feet away. So maybe we wanna set a mic up 10, 12, 15 feet away from the string quartet and they play and you can hear it just as if you were someone sitting in the room. And that's great. That works great in a recording studio. It works great in a concert hall where there's no other sound going on. A perfectly ideal environment. But what if you are in a 
uh, a, a dinner situation. You got people out there, their forks are clanking and they're scraping on the plate and people are talking and you got kids running around and maybe a chicken running through. I go to really weird parties. Okay, so maybe you've got that going on and I can't set a mic 12 feet away because it's going to pick up the chickens and it's going to pick up the knives and forks and people talking. We can't have that in our recording. So what we'll do is we will close mic the violin. We'll put a microphone right on the violin. We'll put a microphone right on the viola. We'll put a microphone right on the cello. Now we lose that bloom that comes off the instrument. We lose the fact that the room filters out some of those scratches and touches. And you know, when I, when I pick up my instrument, I, there's a mic like I'm touching it. It's right here. So, you know, if I, all, all these sort of little sounds that you're hearing right now, a person's not gonna hear you know, you're not going to hear those 10 or 15 feet away. You know, when I when I touch the instrument, right? So the close mic is going to pick all those things up. And that's that gives us more isolation. It means that the mic is hearing the violin more than it's hearing the chickens that might be in the room. I don't know why I came up with that, but I'm going to have to ride that until I die. Um, so close miking gives us more isolation than distant miking. But in our hypothetical uh, chicken dinner scenario, um, that's necessary. You need more isolation than you need sound bloom. Well, what if we're in an even crazier situation, crazier than chickens at dinner, a drummer. Drummers are crazier than chickens, it turns out. If there's a drummer in your ensemble, and as they always do, they put the quietest instrument, the violin, they set him next to the drummer, and this guy thinks he's animal from the Muppets, right? His hands are coming up over his head, he's slamming on these things, and, uh, and he's just beating the living crap out of these drums. His drums are louder in my violin microphone than my violin is. So if the engineer wants to turn up the violin, no can do. All he's gonna get is a bunch of drums. So we need even more isolation than we can get sometimes from a close mic. And that's when we would go to a pickup. And you say, well, it's not as good a sound. Well, it, it, it's better, actually. It's a better sound than animal over here smacking the skins, bleeding through my microphone. So, you know, obviously what we really want, you really want like a Neumann U87 sitting about 15 feet away, but that's, it's like never going to happen unless you're in a recording studio. Well, a close mic, like a, a you know one of those little gooseneck mics, that's better. Sure, yeah, sure, it's better than um, than all the noise that's going to be picked up by that other microphone. And you go, well, maybe a pickup is even better if it's a loud environment, and it is. So sometimes the isolation is more important than exactly how crisp and clear that sound is, because just the laws of physics don't allow me to get good isolation with a microphone if I've got the apocalypse happening six feet away from me, okay? So sometimes you need more natural sound, sometimes you need more isolated sound. What is my thing? Oh yes, yeah, the next thing. I, I got my notes here and I did these last night so I forgot exactly what order they're in, I'm sorry. Um, the other thing about, we gotta talk about feedback. If you've ever amplified a violin, you know what feedback is. Feedback is either that whee, that squee that you get or that low roar that takes off when you've got a microphone and a speaker a little too close to each other. What happens is that the microphone can hear the violin. That's what microphones do. They're supposed to hear the violin, but it can also hear the sound coming out of the speaker. If I'm using an amplifier to monitor for myself, I've got my amplifier here. The microphone can hear the violin, but it can also hear the amplifier. So as I play a little louder, my signal gets stronger going into the microphone, but what's coming out of the amplifier gets stronger too. And now the mic can hear that even better. And then it gets a little louder and the mic can hear that even better. And then it gets louder and the mic can hear that even better. And that's why you will hear what's called feedback. It's a positive feedback loop. And that's why you'll hear feedback usually take off. You'll hear it go whoop because it, it starts, it can just hear itself and it gets a little louder. Oh, I can hear that. Oh yeah, here it comes. So then it's just doing what it's supposed to do. It amplifies what it hears. What it hears gets louder. So it amplifies it more and then it gets louder and amplifies it more. So a microphone, because it's pulling sound out of the air, uh, is gonna be more susceptible to feedback than a pickup is. Now, 
just because you have a pickup does not mean you're off the hook. The back of this violin, this huge piece of wood here, we said that when I play, it vibrates, right? So it's acting like a speaker. But what you don't know maybe is that speakers and microphones are pretty much the same thing. It's just one is sound coming out of it, the other one is sound coming in. So the back of my violin is a speaker. It's also a microphone. So if the sound coming out of the amplifier, and I don't know why I'm pointing to this amplifier that you can't see, but I'm pointing to an amplifier that you can't see, or I'm pointing at the floor, I might be crazy, either one. So if the back of my violin, it's hearing the vibrations of my strings, but if the vibrations coming out of the amplifier that you can't see um, are even louder than that, which they will be, now the back of my violin becomes microphonic. And the back of my violin and the top of my violin start to vibrate, not just from me playing, but also from what they're hearing come out of the speaker. And yes, even a feedback, even a, uh, um, a pickup can feed back. So we do, do hear people a lot of sound, well, what's the, what's the mic or the, the, uh, the pickup that's less susceptible to feedback? Well, yeah, I mean, there, there are some that are maybe a little less susceptible, but the instrument itself is what's causing the feedback. The fact that the, your violin works is what's causing the feedback, okay? Ha, huh. now we get to piezos. The piezo is the most common type of pickup that goes on a violin. Um, and what a piezo is, it's a little crystal that when it vibrates, it generates an electrical signal. And it's not much. It's a little teeny tiny electrical signal. It's a little teeny tiny crystal. It's a little teeny tiny vibrations. We're talking about violins, not jackhammers, okay? So there's a little tiny crystal inside there that when you play it, you play the instrument, it vibrates at certain frequencies. If you're playing an open A, the main frequency is 440 hertz. Those vibrations go into that crystal at 440 hertz and it generates an electrical signal at 440 hertz, plus all the overtones and undertones. And that's what gives it its uh, signature sound. The issue with piezo pickups, um, and we'll get a little more into this in a minute, is that they generate an electrical signal that has a very high impedance. And impedance, we'll think about sort of like the, um, the pressure of that signal coming through. If you, if you imagine that electricity flowing through a wire and uh, fluid flowing through a pipe or a hose, mathematically, we use more or less the same equations to describe the flow of, of a fluid through a hose and electricity through a wire. So if, if we imagine pressure and impedance are not quite the same, but they're pretty, they're related. So imagine that the, the piezo, um, the signal that a piezo generates has a very low pressure. So high impedance is low pressure. It's, it's backwards, but whatever. Um, so imagine you've got a hose and you've got water flowing through that hose and you've got a spring loaded check valve in that hose. So as the water comes up to that hose, the pressure of the water pushes that spring and it opens the valve and the water can flow through. If you've got like a thousand PSI of water, it's gonna slam that spring open and it's all the water is gonna go through as if that spring isn't even there, right? There's so much pressure, it just slams that spring open. Well, say it's a 20 pound spring and I've got 22 pounds of pressure. That spring isn't gonna open all the way. It's gonna open a little bit, and then the water is gonna sort of trickle out the other side or spray, you know, like what you put your thumb over the end of the hose. It's gonna spray out weird instead of flowing out the way you want it to. Well, that's what happens to your signal if you've got a very high impedance, like a piezo signal, and you're feeding it into an amplifier that is not expecting a super high impedance. Say the amplifier, if it's a low impedance amplifier, which means high pressure, backwards, right? It's a very strong, imagine that it's got a very strong spring in there that's holding the signal out. And your high impedance, which is a low strength signal, can't push that spring all the way open. So what comes through is sort of this thin reedy type sound. So that's what impedance is. And that piezo pickups have very high impedance. They work well and they do a good job of capturing your sound. The problem is they have a very high impedance which means that they can't push through a lot of circuits. Um, we'll discuss that, how, how we solve that problem in a little bit, but I just want you to be aware of that particular um, concept. 
So there are basically two types of pickups. There are permanent pickups and removable pickups. If you are the kind of person who plays in an orchestra on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and maybe you go pick up a gig on a Friday, so you can't be out there playing Rachmaninoff with a pickup jack bolted to your violin. Um, my friend Joe D told a funny story about that uh, today, but it, yeah, it, you're gonna feel a little silly sitting in an orchestra with a big pickup jack. You know, if you're violin with this jack on the side of it, people are gonna look at you all crazy. Um, so you'll wanna have a pickup that you can take off of the instrument when you don't need it and put onto the instrument when you do need it. If you're the kind of person who maybe you have multiple violins, maybe you've got your violin that you play in orchestra and you've got a different violin that you play for your, for your amplified gigs, then maybe you could put on a permanent pickup and that would be a replacement bridge. So instead of attaching a pickup to your existing bridge, it is a bridge that, uh, let's see if we got a picture here. Ha ha, look there. So it's a bridge that has a pickup embedded into it. So it's not clamp on, it's not bolt on or anything. It's, it's already embedded in the bridge. The picture here is a Schotten, but they also use uh, bags, makes a, a really nice replacement bridge. Eric Aceto ISI makes a really nice replacement bridge. Fishman makes a nice replacement bridge. You'll see prices in those uh, 99, starting around 99 bucks, going up to 500 or more dollars. Um, and yes, you get what you pay for. Um, so the other kind is a, is, a, um, is a removable. I was like temporary, but it's not temporary. It's removable. It still exists. It's just not on your violin anymore. So one of the real common ones is a wing slot bridge. And it goes into the wing slot of the instrument. Um, and I'll show you one of those in a minute. Uh, there's, there's a picture here on the screen. Um, Cremona is one of the brands that makes one. Fishman makes one. The Shirtler Stat V fits in the wing slot sort of a different way. Uh, My Psy has a pickup that goes in there and you'll see those prices sort of between 90 and $400. Um, there is uh, a Realist. Makes, Realist makes two different kinds of pickups. You can see there's a picture sort of uh, at the top here where it's a, it's a strip that actually fits underneath your bridge. And then they've got a sound clip that goes inside the F hole. And, and bolts on. Um, there is the band, and we'll show you that. It's where it sort of wraps around the instrument. Um, it's got a jack on it, and you can see prices there. Uh, Shirtler's got one that is a, uh, this is sort of a pickup and sort of a mic. It's, a, it's called a contact microphone, um, and it sort of blurs the line. Remember we said that, that microphones hear sounds from the air, and pickups hear sounds that are coming out of solids. Well, the Shirtler is kind of both. Um, there's a they put a ring of putty around and form an annulus, uh, a donut. Uh, they make a donut of putty and stick it on the back of your violin, and then the microphone sticks into that putty. So the microphone, it's uh, the element is maybe just not. Look, look how close it is. That's that close. It's real. It's really close. It's that close to your violin. So. Is it air that's traveling out and hitting that element? Yeah. Is there contact with the instrument? Yeah. It's tricky. Every time you try to draw a line, somebody smudges that line and they go, well, where is it? Huh? Huh? Um, so the Shirtler DYN, the Dyn system, is sort of a mic and sort of a pickup. They sound really good. They're a little bit of a pain and they're pretty expensive. Um, but everything's a trade-off, right? So there you go. Now, if we want to get into microphone, okay, let's let's go back to pickups. Um, there was one, this one. All right, so we were talking about wing slot pickups. There's one that I didn't make a little slide for because it was like one o'clock this morning and I forgot. But it's this one right here. Let me uh, let me scroll down my little. Uh, let's go to. Oh, I'm trying to push a button and a button doesn't want to be pushed. Let's do this. I'm going to scroll right past some of these. Ha ha, here we are on the violin cam. <laughs> so let's angle this thing so it looks right to you. All right, so you can see a little table next to me. This is a Barcus Berry pickup. It's a removable pickup, and you can see that it is attached to 
You can see this is attached to the bridge of the instrument. And it's sort of, it's on there with a couple of screws. I'm trying to show you this without dropping anything or smacking anything. It's really hard to do what I'm trying to do right now. Um, so you can see those two screws and basically it fits into there and this screw holds it tight and this one down here fits into like this little spot right here in your bridge. And then the wire comes over and you've got a carpenter jack that bolts on with uh, like your, um, the same kind of clamp that you use for your chin rest. See this little spot right here on the side of my 100 plus year old violin? That's what happens when you try to tighten one of those jacks without using a tool. Don't be a tool. Don't scratch your violin. If you're going to put on one of those jacks, make sure you're using a chin rest tool. Um, I'm very sad about this thing on my violin, but what can you do? Um, where am I? Uh, here. Ha ha. Here I am. Um, too many cameras. So this pickup right here, let's go ahead and um, we're going to plug in and listen to this pickup. I'm trying to remember how exactly I wired all this. All right. Um, so I've got, just plug in right here. I've got the amplifier. Remember the amplifier we talked about that you couldn't see? It's right over here. Uh, this is a Fisherman Loudbox artist. Um, so I'm, the, the output of that artist is plugged into, is plugged into my interface. So you're hearing right now, you're going to hear the microphone and the output from the artist. So that's the, you're hearing the violin through the microphone that's sitting just a foot away from me. And you're hearing the sound from the pickup going through the, uh, the Fisherman Loudbox artist. I am going to turn the microphone down. Um, let's do this. Let's turn, let's listen to just the instrument. Let's turn the, uh, turn the amp off. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you're just hearing a microphone in the room. Let's turn that back on. Now let's turn the microphone off. You can hear me go away. Here I go. I'm gone. Haha, ha, I'm back. You couldn't mute me forever. All right, so that is what the Barkus Berry pickup sounds like. Again, I refer you to our YouTube page where we have a little more of a comprehensive review where you can hear the instrument and hear the pickup. Um, and so if you really want to hear what this pickup sounds like and you want to watch me put it on, um, you can go to our YouTube page and there is a video on that YouTube page. So let's do this. Let's take this pickup off. Um, switch to the fiddle cam here. Um, let's go to fiddle cam. All right. Whoo! Looky there, fiddle cam. So unplug this, and now let's um, let's get this thing off of here. So this is this is kind of the process for getting this off. You've got to loosen that little screw. This comes off. It's pretty simple, right? That's the part that clips onto your bridge. And then we're gonna use a we're gonna use a chin rest tool instead of scratching the violin again, because you don't wanna hear me cuss. Again. Okay, you just loosen that. Oops, make sure you can see what I'm doing here. You have to see what I'm doing, but so do I. What are you doing? I'm working, Shauna. Hey, Shauna, come over and say hi. I'm coming right now. That's what I'm doing. Except we don't have the Shauna cam on. It's Let's okay. Whoops. Ah, there what's she up, is. everybody? Passive versus active. Yeah. Passive versus active. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you, don't you like it when people are this close to you? What are you doing? 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 Doing social distancing. Oh, that's true. That's true. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that sense. It's true. It's true. But seriously, uh, we are talking about mics and pickups. Uh huh. 
and what the difference is and why you might want one over the other. Oh, okay. And then we're going to talk about, we're going back to fiddle cam. Hey, hey, look at that. So now we did talk about this Cremona pickup, sort of one of these wing slot jobbies. Uh, there we go. Um, this fits right into the wing slot of the bridge. And it's going to be a little bit tight because it's got to capture all those vibrations. But if you sort of work it back and forth a little bit, slide right in there. Get in there nice and good. Nice and good. Hey, don't mess up. I'll try not. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Oh, don't worry. I'll be asking you questions <laughs> later on. So then we'll uh, tighten this guy up. Let's see. Remember how I'm doing this. There we go. This way. I'm sort of working backwards so you guys can see what I'm doing. And it's got me all messed up. So we want this not tight enough that it damages the instrument, but I want it tight enough that it doesn't sit there and vibrate and make a bunch of crazy sounds either. All right, so now we're going to put the, uh, put the sh shoulder rest back on because I'm pretty hopeless without this thing. All right, now we go back to Matt Cam. Ha ha, there I am. All right. So this is, the Cremona is now installed on the instrument. Good times. Uh, let's plug that in. And we'll listen to this for a second. Okay, so let's turn the pickup off. Okay, just turn that. You're going to hear the amp a little bit in the room, but um, you're not going to hear it coming directly through. So that is mostly the mic you're hearing. Let's turn the pickup back on. Turn the mic off. Bye-bye, everybody. Oh, so lovely. All right. So that is what the Cremona sounds like. So that's one bridge pickup and another bridge pickup. And when we talk about the fact that, yes, it's a little more isolating, it's a little less natural, you guys can hear, we're not talking that it sounds like a robot. We're talking there are, there are a few, um, few little details that maybe are not the same on a pickup as there are on a mic. But in order to have good isolation on your signal, so then when they turn up the violin, you hear violin and not drums or cello or something silly like hey, that. Hey, hey. Um, we want more violin, we want more violin. When we want more cello, we want more cello. Oh, so isolation is a good thing. And so do you trade off a little bit when you go from a mic to a pickup? You do. You make a little bit of a trade off. But sometimes that isolation is worth more than the last couple ounces of nuance that you get from a microphone. Um, and it just depends on the situation you're in. So the answer to whether, do I want a mic or do I want a pickup? The answer is it depends. It depends on whether I need more isolation or whether I need more of sort of that airy sound that I get from a mic. So that pickup is, that's, uh, that's the Cremona. Let's try another one. See if you guys can watch me uh, struggle here um, a little more because it's always fun to watch Matt struggle. Shauna gets way too much pleasure out of this. All right. Where am I at? Oh, uh, wait. Uh, I'm going the wrong way. Ha ha ha. Y'all hang with me for a second. Do you have any jokes, Shauna? All right, back to fiddle cam. All right. I was pressing the wrong button. Too many buttons. Um, do the type of strings affect the sound as well? Holy crap, yes. Yes, very much yes. Um, everything affects the sound. The temperature affects the sound. But right now, uh, we're sort of like the thing that you're going to change in any given instant is the pickup. Um, so this again, we'll sort of slide this pickup out of here. You just gently sort of work it out of that wing slot a little bit. All right, that comes out. Now we're going to use our 
handy little chin rest tool here. And we're going to take the uh, take this clamp off. Take the uh, shoulder rest off first. This is entertaining, isn't it? Is this fun watching me do this? This is why I don't usually do this. I like to do this off camera so you guys don't have to watch. <laughs> Ideal, I'd have a bunch of violins in here and each one and have a different pickup on it. And, but then it wouldn't be comparing apples to apples now, would it? And it keeps it real. That's what Sean is saying right there. I'm trying to keep it real. All right, so those are those two pickups. Let's, uh, yeah, let's do the band. We'll throw the band on here. Switch cameras again. Um, go to Matt Cam. Ha ha, Matt Cam. There we are. So this thing, the band, um, this is super, super simple. It's just a little Velcro thing. Just slides in here. And it wraps around the violin. There's like a little velcro -y thing on the back. The tighter you get it, the better it's going to sound. Get it on there good. I'm not really squeezing that hard. Um, so that's on there, wrapped around the violin. Not the greatest look in the world, but it is super simple, and you don't have to use a wrench. If you're scared of wrenches, this might be the thing. Um, this sort of takes advantage of the fact that the front and back of the violin are vibrating, and this, the band, is basically a big ribbon mic, sort of. Um, it's technically a pickup because it's touching the instrument. Um, yeah, let's hear it. Um, one thing that you will discover if you're a sound engineer and you're mixing somebody who has one of these on and you go to solo that channel, just listen to it, you're like, wow, your instrument really is microphonic. You can hear stuff that's happening in the room through the, the basically the microphone diaphragm that the back of the violin is. That was my first experience with one of these. I wouldn't even play in it. I was the sound engineer. Somebody on stage was playing it, and I soloed their channel. I was like, holy crap, I can hear everything. I can hear the vocals. I can hear the drums. I can hear everything. Now, a whole lot more violin than all those other things. But, um, yes, these are microphonic because your violin is, in fact, microphonic. Um, okay. So play a little bit. Let's see, let's turn off the turn off the amp. So this is just the mic you're hearing. Alright, now let's turn the amp on. Bye bye everybody. How you like that? The microphone in the room was off when I was yelling, "Can you hear me?" Um, you could, I, what you were hearing was the back of the violin. Um, what happens if you cover the f holes? What happens sound-wise? Well, there's actually a lot of players who do that. Um, my friend David, who plays with pretty much everybody in the world, has played the Grand Ole Opry more times than he can count. Um, he just throws electrical tape over his f holes. Um, it basically kills the acoustic sound of the instrument but it knocks feedback down a lot. Um, so, hey, let's talk about the acoustic sound of the instrument. Um, let's talk about that. Let me mute this amp real quick. One of the common complaints that we hear from people is, hey, I put that pickup on my instrument and it changed the sound of the instrument under my ear. Well, of course it did. It has to. If it's interrupting, if it's intercepting the vibrations that are coming through the bridge or you're wrapping something around your instrument, anytime something touches your instrument, your chin rest affects the sound of your instrument. Your shoulder rest, because it's touching the wood, affects the sound of your instrument. If you put a pickup on the instrument, it's going to affect the sound of the instrument. It's not a whole lot. 
but a little bit and you got some of these tone freaks who are like it changes under my ear i can't have that well you're out of luck uh, anytime something touches the instrument it changes the sound of the instrument especially if that thing is trying to intercept some of the vibrations that are coming through which is the only way to capture them um, it is going to change the sound under your ear a little bit but there's no way around that. That's just how physics work. And ultimately, at the end of the day, whose experience matters more, yours or your audience's? Because you can practice at home for free and have the sound exactly the way you want it. If you're going to play for people who are paying you, remember back in the days when we used to play for people in person? Strange. Everybody's breathing on each other. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you're playing for people who are hearing you amplified or they're recording you, their experience is the one that matters. That's business 101. So don't worry so much about whether you lose 2% of your sound underneath your ear. Worry about the 100% of the sound that the people that are paying you are hearing out front. Uh, that's uh, just my economics lesson for the day. All right, so we've talked about several different kinds of pickups. We've tried a couple different kinds of pickups. Um, let's talk about microphones. Uh, let's come back and talk about a couple of mics. We got lots of people tuning. Oh, I did not expect that to happen. Sorry. Lots of people tuning in today. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, somebody's in Atlanta. George Carlos is in Atlanta. Lots of people. Hey, so um, yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for being here. So if we have decided that instead of a pickup today, we're in a fairly quiet environment, we really do want all the tone that we can get. Of course, everybody wants all the tone they can get. That today is a microphone day. We're pretty quiet. There's not a lot of chickens running around. Shana missed that, uh, she missed that illustration earlier. There's no chickens at this dinner party. Um, so it's, it's chill, it's quiet. You wanna use a microphone, of course you do. Um, one of the options we have is this little wireless microphone here, the iSolo. Keep going the wrong way. I'm not mirror image in front of me, which is really disorienting. Um, ah, there we go. So the iSolo microphone, let's talk about this little guy. There's a little sticky pad on the back, and there's a little plastic protector on there. You peel that little plastic piece off. Can you see me now? Peel this off. And then this thing sticks on the instrument. This is the microphone element right here. So we're going to stick it on the instrument. It will not hurt your instrument. does not leave a residue. Now we just stick that right on there. doop -de doop Look at there. Won't come off for nothing. So I've got it. All, I've got the, so this is a transmitter. The receiver is over yonder. And I push this button and hold it. Microphone comes on. And I'm going to plug it in now. Plug it in, plug it in. All right. Thank you for adding all this stuff to the comments, Sean. So um, let's turn, oh, let's just play for a minute. So you're hearing this mic and you're hearing the, the room mic. Um, let's get rid of that room mic. Bye-bye, everybody. So um, that is the iSolo mic. It's a little wireless thing. Excellent question, Olivia. Is this wireless or is it Bluetooth, radio or Bluetooth? Yeah, uh, there's no Bluetooth in music. There's no Bluetooth in live music. You can use Bluetooth on your tracks, and it's because nobody cares if you hit play and then the music doesn't start for another second or two. But if you're playing your instrument, you can't have Bluetooth. There's no Bluetooth. There's way too much latency in Bluetooth. So this is a radio transmitter. 
Excellent question. Yeah, a lot of people don't really understand the latency issue on live music. Sean and I were talking about this the other day when we were talking about uh, Zoom concerts and stuff. The reason you can't play an ensemble over Zoom or Google Hangouts or whatever is because there's a couple of hundred milliseconds of delay, which is you know, 0.2 or 0.3 seconds. Like you got, well, gosh, that's not a lot. Oh yeah. Um, in order for us to play together, we need like less than, you know, 10 or 15 milliseconds. And you've got several hundred in Zoom. Thinking about milliseconds of delay, think about the fact that sound travels at roughly one foot per millisecond. So if we're, a, if you imagine being on a football field or a soccer field, if you're not in the US, um, imagine you're all the way on the other end of a soccer field and somebody, you can see them clap their hands and then, you know, like a third of a second later, you hear that clap. That's 300 milliseconds of delay. That's about what you get on Zoom or Google Hangouts on a good day. That's why you can't play with people on there. Um, and then so Bluetooth would actually be even more than that. Bluetooth, sometimes we could get up to a thousand milliseconds, uh, which is a full second of delay. That's like being a, a quarter of a mile away from somebody and they, you know, they hit the drums and like a second later you hear it. You can't play with that. There's no way. So uh, yes, this is a radio frequency thing. All right, next thing, let's go back to the fiddle cam. Um, where is our fiddle cam? Okay, haha, -ha. here we are, fiddle cam. Uh, I'm gonna take this thing off, I'm gonna turn it off. It didn't turn off just yet, that was a really satisfying sound. All right, now it's off. We we'll put the little plastic thingy back on there. Stand by. Now we're going to put. This is a Provider Series mic. This looks pretty similar to a mic from another manufacturer whose name we won't mention because they haven't been very nice people. Um, this is a nice mic. Um, we like this mic quite a bit. It is less expensive than the mic that shall not be named um, and sounds pretty much just as good. And the people are nicer. So we put this microphone on and it just sort of slides on the edge of your violin like that and just right on. Hey, looky there. Let's go back to Matt Cam. Ha <laughs> So the mic is on there and then there's a one thing I don't like, and it's and it's these guys and pretty much everybody else who makes these little teeny tiny mics, there's a little proprietary cable that goes from the mic itself to the jack. Um, if it were me and I were doing this thing for a living, I would have about three of those cables in my case. Because you know what little cables do? They go bad. And because this is not a universal cable, your sound man is not going to have one in his... Uh, He's not going to have one in his toolbox. And if it goes bad, you're not working today. And if you're not working today, you're not getting paid today. So have a couple of these. Have a couple of these extra cables. If you've got any of the little proprietary cables, if it's not a quarter inch or an XLR, you should own more than one of them. Um, the other thing about this, we talk about active versus passive. Remember when we talked about um, how impedance is a thing with piezo pickups and, and how you might want uh, to fix that. One of the ways to fix that high impedance, which is like a low pressure signal, is to use a uh, preamp. Well, a preamp is essentially a little powered device that converts that high Z or high impedance, low pressure signal to a stronger signal. One of the ways that you can power that little device with a preamp is called phantom power. And it sounds like, ooh, spooky. Um, phantom power is simply power that travels. We've got this, uh, this XLR connection here, this little three-wire uh, three connection. You've got a, a neutral and a hot, which means your signal's traveling down one. The other one is the, is the neutral. This third one can be used to send power back through the line. So I'm sending you signal down this line, and power for the microphone is coming back up through this same line. And that's called phantom power. So we plug in 
to the XLR connection. And if you have an active microphone, which means it needs power, you will simply need to notify your engineer, hey man, I need phantom power. He'll go, no problem, bro. I will simply hit the phantom power button on my console and I will send you some phantom power. So we're gonna go click phantom power on the amp here. And I'm gonna turn off uh, my microphone and we're just gonna leave this one on. So bye bye everybody. That's fun. That's nice, isn't it? You can hear me. See, so here's one of the other things. Let's fix this. Uh, let's turn that mic off. Ha ha ha. Now you can't hear me through that mic. You're just hearing me through my mic. So that's one of the things about having a microphone on your instrument. What happens if you sneeze? You're playing, right? Let's turn that mic back on just for fun. Achoo! Yeah, right? Or I go to turn my page, or my bow hits my music stand, or I cough because I got the Rona. <coughs> or I say something to the guy next to me. Did you hear that viola? He's so out of tune. Hey. <laughs> so that's the thing about mics is they can hear the instrument, but they can hear everything else too. Maybe you bump your instrument. You bump the mic. Okay, that's a big deal. You got to be aware of these things. Um, a pickup, you can get a little bit of that when we showed you with the uh, the band, but it's not not nearly as much. Much more isolating. All right, so we are, how far into this mess are we right now? Oh my goodness, almost an hour into this. We've been having fun. Um, let me mute this real quick. All right, so mute that microphone. Do you guys have any questions about mics or pickups or any of this? We sort of covered a lot of ground. Um, let me see if anybody, Shauna's been talking about, yeah, she's used a lot of these and they, oh, they sound so good. Um, any questions do you guys have? No questions. Okay, it's beautiful. If you have questions and you didn't get to it, maybe you're watching this later, maybe it's not Wednesday at 3.56 Eastern time right now for you. Um, maybe you're watching this, you can put your questions in the comments section and we will do our best to answer them. Also, do not forget to go to our website, electricviolinshop.com. Let's go scrolling through a couple of these things here. Um, on, also on our YouTube page, I sent you to our YouTube page to talk about some more review videos for these pickups. Um, this is our From Classical to Radical series that's on our YouTube page that talks about a lot of uh, other issues. Uh, here's our Instagram. We post a lot of stuff on our Instagram that we do not post anywhere else. So follow us on Instagram. Let's see what else. Nope, that's it right there. Um, okay, I'm back. Um, do I have to tell the sound person anything particular or in general when using a pickup? Yeah, so great question. Uh, I would typically let the sound engineer know what I'm using. Uh, I will, for sure, whether it's a mic or a pickup, I know that Shauna has, um, has done a lot of gigs where she uses both. Um, she uses a mic and a pickup, and the beauty of that is that you can send both signals to your engineer if you trust your engineer. If you don't trust your engineer, you should fire them. If you have an engineer you do trust, just let them do their job. Um, but yeah, if you have both, sometimes the best thing to do is just send them both to your engineer and let him make those real-time decisions uh, or her make those real-time decisions about which one to use. So yeah, I would generally let my engineer know. And during sound check, I'll experiment with some things um, and say, okay, here's, 
here's a mic, here's just the mic sound, here's the pickup, just the pickup sound. What are you hearing out front? Do you need me to EQ anything different here? Do you need me to add some reverb? What do you need me to do? Um, that's always a great question for an engineer. Are you getting everything that you need from me? And, and uh, they're generally not shy people, so they'll tell you, uh, hey, I could use more signal from you, or I'm getting a lot of bleed when I use your microphone. You go, well, we can try to reposition it. We can try, you know, whatever. So it's a great question to ask your engineer, hey, are you getting everything you need from me? Um, but using a pickup, yeah, generally, one of the things um, that you'll wanna be aware of is that you hear a lot more reverb in life than you think you do. So when you use a microphone, you've got a lot of air sort of around you and the, and the microphone can hear the room that's around you. When you're using a pickup, you don't realize how much of the room you hear until you're not hearing that room anymore because pickups are super isolating. Um, you will want to add more reverb than you think you need to, to your pickup. So you'll have a lot more reverb on a pickup than you will on a mic to basically have the same sound. And I'm not talking about these washy, you know, reverbs that people use when they're trying to hide the fact that they can't play in time or in tune. I'm talking about the, and that's why they use those, but I'm talking about like a, a nice warm, short reverb that when the way you check a reverb to see what it sounds like, let's just talk about reverb for a second since we're here. The way you check a reverb to see what it sounds like, you just go and you know, and then you'll hear it just a little chop and you hear, you hear it go or you just hear it go so that's how you check a reverb. It, um, you want it to be um, relatively short, like a second or less, and you want it to be relatively warm. You don't want it to sound all crackly and brittle, but you also, also don't want it to be muddy. But anyway, so yeah, so you're probably gonna use more reverb with a pickup than you will on a mic, because that's just one of those things that you don't really realize how much reverb you're hearing in the universe uh, until uh, you don't hear any. Um, I talk, talk about the a Zeta or a bridge. No, not today. We're actually talking about amplifying acoustic violins today. Uh, those are fantastic instruments that you're asking about, and we'll cover those some other time. Um, best way to store the pickup. Good question. Um, I think it depends on how much you use it. Pickup. The the pickup is going to be less fragile than your instrument is. So I would just sort of look at it that way. Um, if I'm playing three gigs in a row that I need to be amplified for, I just leave it on the violin, especially if it fits in the case that way. Um, uh, the rest of them, like the band, like this one in particular, I just fold it up and just stick it in the case. They're, they're relatively durable. They're certainly more durable than your instrument. Um, good amplifier with a pickup. <coughs> ah, I promise I do not have the Rona. Um, it's a good question, a good amplifier when using a pickup. Um, like I said, you want to have some uh, some reverb, so it's nice if you've got an amplifier that has a little reverb in it. Um, and also, if you're using a passive pickup, remember we talked about the high impedance, you want to make sure, unless you've got an external preamp that you're plugging into, you want to make sure that the amplifier you're using has a nice warm preamp in it. Uh, I really like the Fishman Loudbox amps for uh, playing violin with a pickup on them. If you just were, if, if I was just say, hey, I'm going to be playing my acoustic with a pickup on it, I work here. I can grab any amp that I want from here. Uh, I would probably, my first, I'd just walk over and pick up a Fishman Loudbox. That's probably what I would grab. Um, any more questions? If not, then I will sign off. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank you for tuning in. You guys have been awesome. If you have more questions, go ahead and dump them in the comments section and we will answer them the best we can. Okay? Y'all have a great week.